I couldn't believe it. Under a minute. Yeah. Bumper. They, they took the bumper, the cradle and the headlights. Yes. Mm. And it was from turning. It wasn't yeah. from stopping and getting back in the car. But you are in your natural environment. You're almost home. Boom. They take Be comfortable. You. Both of our colleagues' um, incidents actually happened five minutes away from home. The police, in my opinion, should ramp up the efforts of not only catching the guy that hijacks you. I think he's not the big player in the in The, the in syndicate. The, the syndicate. Almost. Yes. Even insurance companies got a higher risk rating for people driving after nine at night. And now I can understand why. Because that is the times you're either tired or you're coming back from a function maybe and your guard is down. That's why your Hilux and your Toyota Fortuners get stolen so much because the engine is actually compatible in a Quantum. In the last 30 days, two of our colleagues have been hijacked and taken to a undisclosed location where they were threatened with a gun, then driven to a ATM to withdraw their daily limit and threatened to be killed unless they were given their PIN numbers, their IDs, their driver's license and all their possessions. Then they were left in a field and their vehicle was stolen. On today's episode, we want to process what the five most hijacked vehicles are, the days where the hijackings actually peak and the exact times. We're also going to discuss what is it that you shouldn't do if you ever end up in a situation like that and what is it that you should do to maximize your chance to survive this traumatic ordeal that unfortunately so many South Africans are faced with. Next to me as always, Anna-Marie Mayer. Thank you. Let's get into this episode and hopefully we can add some value to you and your family. Let's go. Last year's hijacking incidents were 24,000. Okay, this year, 25,000. So they're on the rise. 73% of all these incidents occur in residential areas. 73% of them. The remaining 27% were in business and public areas. So hijackings mostly occur in residential areas. When you are, you know how they say, on a very long journey, you make an accident 50 k's away from home, not 500 k's, because you're alert and you're paying attention. But you are in your natural environment, you're almost home, boom, they take you. comfortable. It. Both of our colleagues' um, incidents actually happened five minutes away from home at a robot. And especially when you drive to your own gate. Very dangerous. That's the most dangerous place. Yeah. I agree with you. So I want to get into the five cars and why. And then I'm going to get into the times um, and the days that it actually happens. Then we're going to go into what not to do and what to do. Perhaps the, we can... The days and the times, that was actually quite frightening yeah. stats. You guys are going to enjoy that. Yeah. I, was, I didn't expect that yeah, at me all. Me neither. So... Number one, a VW Polo. It is the most popular vehicle among thieves because there's so many on the road and the constant need for parts, engine parts, doors, all this type of stuff. Because there are so many, the demand is big, so therefore that supply needs to be fulfilled. So VW Polo, number one. About a year ago, we had that frightening little video clip yeah. right in front of our office. We're under a minute from yeah. turning and leaving, they removed the headlights and the bumper. Oh, of a on golf. A, yes. I remember that. And that One was of our colleagues, just, yes. I couldn't believe it. Under a minute. Yeah. Bumper, they, they took the bumper, the cradle and the headlights. Yes. Mm. And it was from turning. It wasn't yeah. from stopping and getting back in the car. It was from turning on the corner, parking, removing and back onto the corner. I just couldn't believe it. I'm going to go into the second one. And it's a cause and effect. So... The Toyota Quantum Taxi is not the most hijacked vehicle. However, it is probably the hardest working vehicle in South yes. Africa, by far. You know, taxi drivers, I've got mad respect for them. And here's why, before you throw things at me. They wake up at 4 a.m. and they work very hard until 9, 10 o'clock at night. That vehicle almost never switches off and no. it's going up and down. They're not the, you know, they're, they're not the, the safest drivers. They're not the slowest drivers. So that, that vehicle constantly gets a hammering, climbing over pavements, picking up, dropping customers all over the place. Therefore, the need for engines comes in. That's why 
your Hilux and your Toyota Fortuners get stolen so much because the engine is actually compatible in a quantum. Okay, now how many quantums are on the road? Hundreds of thousands. And it's caused these so so many of these vehicles on the road. Hundred percent. So that that that's a very very high risk vehicle. Hilux as well as a Fortuner because the engine fits in a quantum. So it's not necessarily, you know, we're gonna steal the car, hit numbers on it, and then and resell it. it. So they'll strip the car, put the engine in a quantum, here we go, another 800,000 Ks or whatever it is that they do, and then sell off the other body parts. And it's not, it's not unreasonable, people don't know this. Uh, you know, we've, we've bought quantums that, or we've traded in quantums that you know, people bought newer model quantums from us. Then it's three or four years old. And then, you know, normal kilos for a four year old car is 100,000. And then, the, you know, the, 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 the quantum that was a taxi stops there with a million kilos. I'm like, geez, what, don't, you, like, don't you guys sleep? So, no, four to nine. So, very quickly, will you experience an engine problem? And boom, there we go. Yeah, it's a it's more than a lifetime of mileage. Hundred percent. On a four year old vehicle. Then Nissan MP two hundred. It's the third most hijacked vehicle in South Africa. An MP two hundred is also very much in demand. Okay, so the supply from the dark market needs to be there because in South Africa we don't really have a small bucky compared to the MP two hundred. So that's the only thing that we've got. Yes. They get stolen. Those ones, many of them, many, many, many of them, they get new tags, new numbers, and then they and get they sold off. Go, yeah. And they, they get sold off as clone vehicles. The next that, I uh, didn't know. I wasn't the, aware of that. The, the next one, the Ford Ranger. Yes, okay. I really didn't. When I read that, I thought to myself, but that's not how I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. so Ford Ranger. And, and here's what they do with them. They found on the Mozambican border. So they steal them here export them to Mozambique, get them through the borders, obviously with bribes and corruption and all this other stuff. But they get them through there and that's where they used, the Ford Rangers. Well, obviously the Mozambicans believe in a Ford Ranger. Yeah, <laughs> not that it's a bad car, it's a very good car. And and they, they'll steal it because it's a good car and it's, it's long lasting. So they'll be able to take it over the border and drive it for years. There. Well, the funny facts about all of these was the fact that there's a use and that's why they hijacked. Every 22 minutes. A car is hijacked in South Africa. That's the statistic. It's Every horrible. 22 minutes. And it's a life at risk. Yep. And that's the scary part. Because now it's not taking your car anymore. It's taking your car and what you've got with you. And it's your life. So if it was just still the fact that we take your car and off <laughs> they go. And this is what they do with your vehicle. I think it would have been okay. But now it's your life at risk. Yeah. So, so here's my problem, and I, I think that the solution, the solution is always deeper. It's it's not a it's not a one level conversation. I think it's a multi level conversation. The maximum penalty for a hijacking is lifetime imprisonment. But I never impose that. Okay, they don't. Then you need to go two steps deeper. What is the reason? that that vehicle is being hijacked. What's, what's the next link of the chain? When you hijack a vehicle, where do you take it to? Okay, let's get that person. Because that person either has a chop shop or he is very close to the original syndicate that moves the cars off to wherever they go to. Mozambique, I'm sure they go to other countries as well. So the police, in my opinion, should ramp up the efforts of not only catching the guy that hijacks you, I think he's not the big player in the in the, the, in the syndicate. Game. The syndicate, almost. Yes, but the here's the problem. Involved. These people, step two and link three, very wealthy, so they've got, in terms of leverage, they can buy th things and they can afford highly paid lawyers. And unfortunately, in my opinion, resources being wasted, you know, to go run around and 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 try and prevent these, instead of go off to the route. Yes. Cut the snake's head off. Boom. Clean. Yeah, it's Cut not only the person with the hijacking. 100 percent. It's, it's more. It's more than that. Let's get into the times. Okay, I that think was really the scary you, you part. You do the times. Wednesdays, now. Thursdays and Fridays between six and nine. Then Friday and Saturday nights between nine and midnight. Because that's the times we go out. So that made sense. Yeah. Then obviously during peak hours. Yeah. 
six o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock. Yeah. So hijacking is happening in the morning as well. Yes. And then um, lastly, the visibility between six o'clock and 12 o'clock at night. And that is also because that tend to, and even insurance companies got a higher risk rating for people driving after nine at night. And now I can understand why, because that is the times you're either tired or you're coming back from a function maybe, and your guard is down. So that visibility factor and the fact for driving at night between six and 12 is also a danger zone. 100%. And what do you do if you find yourself in that situation? And best practices that we could come up with is Number one, don't make any sudden movements because the criminals will think you're reaching for a weapon. You are, um, you know, you are about to threaten them. And speaking to one of the colleagues um, was different to speaking to the other one. The first colleague that it happened to was the person that held the gun was drunk. He could smell alcohol mm. and the person was shaking, meaning this is most probably his first time he's doing this. Okay, highly dangerous, highly dangerous. He knew, he knew that he's just going to agree to everything when they ask him for something. He's going to tell them, I'm going to reach into my pocket and give you my card. And, you know, he, he explained what he's going to do before he does it because the guy was drunk and his hand was shaking. The second one said the guy was very calm. He spoke in a soft tone. He said to him, if you make any sudden movements, I'm going to shoot you. Okay, so the second one was a professional, not his first rodeo. Definitely. I think he's a safer person than the first one. The first I'm one sure. will, will, will make a mistake and, and, and just pull the trigger. And in that state of mind, he's not going to worry. The second one knows he's there to perform a job. He did his thing, took his car, took his phone, everything, dropped him off in the field, did not hurt him at all, and then left. Left with the vehicle and left with the card. And, uh, but first, they drew the money out. So no sudden movements, agree to everything, your possessions, your phone, your watch, your ring, it does it, your wallet. Those are earthly things. You can always go and work hard and replace them. Even if you don't have insurance, you can always make up the money to buy a new yes. vehicle. You can't buy your a life. life you you can't. can't buy. You can't. You can't buy a life. And um, I think... As don't look at them. 100%. That is something that someone said to me once, is just never look them in the eyes. Yeah, yeah. Just look straight forward, look down, don't make the movement, as you mentioned, yeah. but don't look at them. And, and obviously, they, they, they don't want to be identified yes. in, in, a, in a later scenario. They don't want you to point them out in a lineup or anything like that. Just avoid eye contact as much as possible. Agree to everything. Give them the stuff and, you know, let it go. Carry on with life. Sad episode, yeah. but I loved it. Sad but true. And hopefully, we added some value and gave you different perspective. And um, if you enjoyed it, or if you don't agree with our perspective, leave us a comment, hit the like button, and... And please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell. Take care of yourselves and have a good day. Bye-bye.